Channel. And, and it's just an amazing thing that this man's dominance by hand cannot uh, work into their clearance work around the ground. And he doesn't need There's help another like one. that. He got it from the umpire who not only did a bad bounce but fell over at the same time. So, inglorious start for him. But the second quarter really starts to wind up now as Fife drives it out for the spaces on the wing. And the bounce favoured marriage. Plenty of Richmond jumpers. Just a handball the ball too. Big Griffiths had to go back into trouble. Cochin will try to get them out of it, which he nearly did, but not quite his Sandilands. Bending over, using Maine, De Boer. Trying to nudge their way forward. And Newman was having to have a quick glance forward. Like what he saw, because there's plenty of space for Dustin Martin. He was almost captured by McPhee. It's McFarlane that's able to come up with the footy and confidently stride away. Didn't help Dawson too much, but this time Dawson safely able to get it to McPhee. And things start to open up through the middle corridor. Oh, this is an issue. Sandy Lands, I think, is dominating marriage at the moment. And their second string ruckmen aren't good enough. Wasn't a great kick from Hill. Advantage paid as a free kick was deemed to go the way of Mundy and Fremantle. Here's Ballantyne and Pavlich combining. He had him by the arm and the hand. He almost timed him enough to get a free, but they've got away. Ballantyne setting up Mazungu. Peers into the 50. High ball for Maine or Bradley. Bradley really busted a gut to get there. Takes the mark. Pavlich is looming, by the way. He's running down towards the square. Rance getting in front of him now, but the footy's going to come in. Set up for Pavlich. Drops short. And the two Tigers made a meal of it between them. Bit of basketball action from Pavlich behind the back. Out to Mundy, and Mzungu takes the mark. Well, they are killing him at the moment across half forward for Richmond. They need to find a target and find it very quickly. The rebound from Fremantle off that area of the ground, uh, they just cannot cope with the pressure going forward now. He works himself out. Got all the logistics right. Another goal to Fremantle by Mazungu. That was extraordinary work by Pavlich. Now, I reckon during the week, one of our shows, Hutto, we'll get a little bit of um, Sweet Georgia Brown, the Globetrotters uh, music underneath this pit. <laughs> Around the back and yep. brings it back again. Can sing it for you if you want to. But... Just whistle it, please, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Stop at that. Well, we marvel at Matthew Pavlich uh, with that bit of work, but the question's got to be, I guess, the lack of confidence of the defenders. Alex Ranks spoiling Ivan Marrick. One of them had to either spoil it to the boundary or take the mark to not allow that goal to happen. Yeah, good call, Jacko, because the Richmond defence under plenty of pressure right now. And as you said, they seem to have, from a confidence point of view, really fallen away. What's happened now, Walters has gone to Newman. They've identified him, as we said in that first quarter, as the defensive kicker. Halbig has become the loose man in defence for Richmond, a young player. Yeah. They don't mind that free man. You want a kicker, a, a really good ball distributor, or a third man up exponent. It, Halbig, at this stage, seems to be neither. Walters just couldn't quite break the shackles. That's a good tackle and a good result as far as oh, Richmond five. are concerned. Five, slick with the hands, maybe even too quick, Main. But Jacko, just when we were down on the ground, I think Nathan Five. I was surprised at how big he is through the trunk and how big he is through the thighs. He's a really well-balanced player. He looks like he's a real powerhouse through, from the th well, through the thighs. Very, very much uh, a clever player, but what you're saying there, Dermot, he's deceptively tall and he just gets it around the ground like a midfielder. Well, you can't get around him. You can't get over him. You can't go through him. He's big sandals. He's got the mark and he's kicking it and it's heading towards goal. And it's a great last lunge from Rance to spoil and not give the freeway on Pavlich. Well, I think it's time. It's time for Damien Harwick to go out and say to Big Ivan, you need to tighten up on this bloke. You've you had a very good year, but at the moment, Sandy Lance is just too dominant in this game for our liking. Big kick in. Puts a lot of faith in Tuck, but he can't even get there. McPhee oh, no, takes the mark. Clever play by the teammate. He, he ran Tucky under the ball there. And now Pierce with a bit of a run up. He's got a fair leg on him. Driving kick. Well, they are backs to the wall oh, here. The Tigers. They, they need to take some heat out of this play. Now Marich is over on the other side. He's up against David Mundy. He's got to go to him if he wants to single him out and put it in the air to him. 
You see him just on the left hand side of screen there. And he's not going to make it. Sandilands will beat him down the line. It's not working hard enough. He's trying to move into the centre now. Now Sandilands just sets up down the line. Early driving ball. They need to find other avenues into attack because they're just bereft of them at the moment. And clean up operation begins with McPhee and then Sandilands and then Mundy. It's one link after another in the chain. Pavlich demanding the footy. Could Walters ended up being the target. Could have drawn a free kick for in the back. Pavlich still in the mix. Good physical contact and well, Newman well. happy to get it over the boundary line. That is great get... work by the captain just to make the contest as you call it, Hutto. They've got to get their hands on the footy. Fremantle have had the ball 34 Shit. times in this second quarter. Richmond only nine wow. possessions. Four of those have been by kicks. Look at the tap. Oh, gee. Put it down his throat. Cochin with an aggressive handball oh, no. out to Tuck. And now they can run through Grigg. He's kicked it into the space, so they need the bounce oh. to favour them, and it doesn't. Tough for Delidio. Good tackle on Crowley, but the ball had gone. Fumble from McPhee. Johnson gets shoved into the ground. Play on the call. Grigg happy to take that. Uses White. As they try and orchestrate a move forward with a couple of bounces. Revolt not there for him. The kick was smothered. He played that well, Duffy. He withdrew, he withdrew, invited White to come towards him because he was backpedalling, and then when he sensed he encroached a bit far, just charged him, got a hand on the on the smother. Damien Hardwick's 40th birthday today. It's not looking good for a joyous celebration, you'd have to say, at this stage. I, I worry about that term. The football now of a player to bounce the ball two or three times on the run and to be spoiled from the front, mm. not run down from behind. You, you've got to be better with your decision-making or your poise under pressure. Maris looking for a free, doesn't get it. Sandilands can be a dangerous kick. Revolt was able to fly. Trying to help lock it in for the Tigers. They're just about out. Fremantle, Main arched the back. Got it to Pierce and then to Ballantyne. One more target and they'll be right. But oh, fumble from Alice could be critical as far as Richmond are concerned. Newman hatched it. He's able to get to his feet, which was good play under the circumstances that were looking dire. Not much better now, though, for them as Ballantyne escapes. Kicks to half forward. Morris, can they get a quick switch here, Richmond? They've got no, they've got no flow in their play. This is that the strangulation that you talked about, Dern. Rossi Lyons game plan to a team. I reckon Ross would be looking right at the moment. It's a bonus. We've had 10 shots at goal. Four of them are, are, are majors because he's just strangled Richmond's flow on play. They've been forced to go right across the ground here. And no target ahead. Uh, well, he sold it nicely on McPhee to advance the cause over King's head. It's going to bounce all the way through. Johnson was about to be captured. Bradley was able to sidestep Rewalt and use McFarlane. And now Mzungu. And they can break through centre half back if he's willing to go there. There's Fremantle players to hit. Crowley, they've taken it out wide instead. Taking no chances. Spur able to get himself loose. That was confident. It was. And good disposal. To Mundy. Ballantyne is there. He says, go, go longer. Use oh. Barlow, then go to me. Ballantyne's got it on the 50. The goals are in sight. Ballantyne will help himself to another. And Fremantle are up and rolling. Well, that rebound again. They haven't got a key forward other than Rewalt, and the disposal has been very ordinary for the Richmond side inside their 50. The rebound is coming out of Lockwicker. They've gone in three dimes, came out three dimes by the stats in this quarter, but it's the way, a lack of pressure from the forwards of Richmond. Watch this, Shuri. Now, this is so clever by Ballantyne. He has pushed his man in there, held out himself to receive. Hayden Ballantyne has a reputation as being a niggler, a, a, a nasty little piece of work. This bloke can seriously play. No doubt. Forget about the, the antics and whatever anybody thinks about him personally. This bloke can play. Unfortunate for Martin, and he didn't get the length of the kick right. Went into dangerous hands indeed in Hill. Eventually it comes Ibbotson's way out here on the wing. Being trailed in by Jackson, which meant that uh, he wasn't able to adjust. And it's all Fremantle again up into the 50. Pavlich lurking still. Dangerously down there, Tuck. Pressure. Multiple tackles laid. Newman decided to grab it. Could have perhaps palmed it off to a teammate. In the end, he was able to find some solace in the boundary line. But 
Things are not looking good for Richmond. This has been a powerful performance by Fremantle so far. And there'll be other teams watching a little anxiously, I think, about the way Fremantle have got their system going. I'll give you a stat at the next break, Hutto, which will tell very similar to a Collingwood of 2010 Premiership here. Monday. Well, someone's down behind play, Richmond player, just off this pack to the right. Right. Ending. There it Griffiths, is. is it? I'm not sure. Well, yeah, they've got to bowl it up. They've got to get out of the area here. 20. It should be. It probably will be Griffiths. It's a two on the nearest number that I can see. Might have a look back and see what's, what's happened there so we can get a little bit better idea of the injury. And he goes in the ruck and falls on his head. Oh, oh right on the temple. He was out just as he hit the ground. That couldn't put his hand down to see, stop it. Is there oh. absolutely any move? No, there's zero no, movement. Horrible, That's where he landed. So that boy... And a lot of strife. Hopefully the neck's all right, because it could have been another couple of inches doing, which could have been tragic. You see the uh, mobile... What do we call that? Mobile ambulance as such? And just that stat I was talking about, Hutto, in the last six weeks, Fremantle have had a differential of time inside forward 50 of 14 minutes plus. In Collingwood's premiership year, it was over 15 minutes. So they are getting to that level, which is a massive stat. 15 minutes inside their forward 50 more yeah. than the opposition out of a 120-minute game save. So that is unbelievable. Well, they're restricting their opposition over the last six Getting weeks to 65 points. Yeah. And it's Richmond are going to have to do exceptionally well to get to 65 today. We're halfway through the second quarter and they're on 15. When a bit of fatigue comes into the game, mm. it does open up a bit. You kick a few and then at the end of the game you can get the odd cheapie. I reckon Ross would be dirty on letting cheapies out of the bag. This stage here, that's unfortunate. They're really unfortunate. And a good lad too, he was Benny Griffiths. He went for the ball, he was not eyes, but so nothing but footy. 17 games in total, debuted in um, 2010, so in the two years. Big size, good size, has played in the ruck a few times, gone yeah. forward. Had a hard time with injury, hasn't yes, he? Yes, he has had a shocking set. run. Now, let's have a, let's have a quick look at uh, the other results while we had the delay. Obviously, last night, Geelong with their big win over St Kilda, although they were challenged early in the last, in the third, early in the last. Amazing victory for Carlton, yeah, enough uh, to uh, catapult them back into the eight. Uh, over Fremantle on percentage before this game started. A huge win, almost 100 points. Hutto, Melbourne got the job done against GWS. Yes. Have a look at all the players getting in the shade. But, you know, it's 24 degrees out there. They haven't yeah. been used to this for probably 12 months nearly, I would think. Well, it's, it's, it's the first time I, I can think since March I've seen people with, with zinc cream on, other than the odd game up at, at the uh, Metricon Stadium. So here's the situation. This is mm. the live ladder, so we're... So if the scores were as they are now, Griffiths is uh, on the stretcher and being applauded by the Fremantle crowd here, which is nice to see. It was obviously a point of discussion last week as uh, Tom Hawkins left the ground. That's fantastic by the Fremantle crowd. Well done. Oh, you hate that. You hate anybody who gets hurt like that and they boo players coming off the ground. You get You've got to have a good look at himself. Matter of fact, individual supporters have, should have a go at their own supporters when that happens. In fairness, a lot of them did applaud Jack Hawkins last week. Yeah, I know. Just some a couple of idiots. We get them in every crowd. Yeah, the minority get heard fairly loud, though, occasionally. Point. This is Cochin as play restarts, That's and he got high. one high. Yeah, so cool. maybe that little break might have been something mm. that Richmond can work with to just make some changes that'll have some sort of effect on this game. It doesn't look like it yet. Johnson back to Dawson. He sends it in deep. The danger is real. The danger's name might still be Pavlich. Stumped away. Oh, the umpire got in the road. Edwards. Nice little manoeuvre, but here's Hill. He's got Pavlich in the pocket. That's probably not the right option. High ball. Bradley comes into frame. He's got the mark! Kepler takes it. At the point of the square. Well, Derm, you were looking at it. I was like, Chris Mayne, the last time that went in, he had his arm held. Yep. And we thought, that's got to be a free kick. He would have been paid a free kick, I reckon, nearly for holding other than marking the ball. They're dangerous there. Oh. Uh, what's, well, they're 21 points up at the moment. This is showing some really bad signs. Richmond have come and they want to have a crack and whatever. I 
just feel that this choke that Fremantle apply is going to take away Richmond's appetite to run forward freely. And once that happens, oh. 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 I was... <laughs> sometimes you'd have to try really hard. If you were if you were tanking, you'd have to try hard from there to miss that. That's Sean Griffiths. Ben Griffiths in the room there. Yeah. And that's normally just a safety precaution. So for the family and friends that are at home. Really kicks in. Marich lets it bounce. Hey, kick. Uh, right on the edge of uh, oh. disaster here, Richmond, the way they are playing. Let's hope from their point of view they can get some system and find some way out of here. Well, Fremantle have broken Richmond down to 53% disposal efficiency. So... In broad terms, every second disposal is not hitting the target. Morris got some direction from Cochin about like where that. to put it, but it wasn't there. That wasn't the instruction. It's just the DeBoer pressure. And Ross would be lapping this up. So Pierce can set them up one more time. Pavlich will come late, and Martin was. He drew with four. He drew four opponents then, Pavlich. Yeah. yeah. Marich went to him. He had his original opponent as well. Watch this set up with Sandy Lance. This will be a set play. Let's see if he gets his hand on the ball. Just to the side of the pack. Gee, that's well organised. Quick kick from Crowley. And Post able to just gather it in before he went over the line. So the margin is 22. Halfway stage of this second quarter. There's no switch in their play. They uh, cannot switch nil. the ball, which opens up the, open, the fat side of the ground. So in it comes again. It's a numbers game at the moment, really. Just keep getting it in there. Eventually, you'll get a result. Bradley missed the easy one. Tries to make this as difficult as possible. Hill, suddenly it's in Cotchen's hands. Look at him swoop. Pounced on it. He's bouncing. And he's away. He's going to run down the spine, Koch, and he'll be a chance to get it again out on the centre wing. He'll need to, just about. And I that is beautiful That's running. exactly what King's got in mind, but he's got to cope with a couple of Fremantle players. Plug. He'll be exhausted. He'll try his well, best. Well, He'll well, almost well. draw a free kick. I applaud that. Yep. Yes. That is work for your team. Look at that. We saw him. He spiked his way through the traffic, stole the ball, and he's ended up on the same play on the half-forward flank opposite in 110 metres away. Jacko, has O'Hanlon come into the play yet? Have they made the sub? Just trying Griffiths. to work that out. There's a lot happening down at the uh, interchange bench here. Matthew Pavlich once again come off, getting some work done to that hamstring. So uh, I think Richmond just trying to wait for the all clear oh, to sub him out. He adapted extremely well under the circumstances. He was being hunted by Ballantyne. You can see the indecision written all over the Richmond half back line's faces, though, at the moment. Well, they, they need one thing to happen, Hunter. I don't think it's going to happen quickly. They need the goals on the wing. I know they have. Because uh, that's how they're kicking the ball. They have activated this. So Brett O'Hanlon is out there at the minute. OK, thanks, Jacko. High ball to half forward. McGuan. Unfortunately, doesn't look like being a, an effective target. Not that it's been his fault at the moment, because it's been down the other end. Brick and Hawley and Newman. As soon as he got it, he knew he had to release. Edwards came onto the scene. Now Grigg can put some penetration on the kick. Out comes Revolt. There's a busy intersection at half forward. He had to work onto the left. Fine line oh, there. And there was no margin for error. Really courageous effort from Jake King. You knew he'd go, and he did. Now he's just got to be compass enough to go back and have the shot. I said great stuff on two accounts because Revolt just the smartest. If he kicked the ball, he was never going to make the distance on his non-preferred. So he had to look in the corridor, and he saw King running in the space, and... Well, we knew Jay King, were gonna, he wasn't going to shirk the issue. Inside of the bicep region, strikes Jay King across the chops. Oh, no, that's right. I don't think no. Jake's worried about the next Cleo Bachelor of the Year pageant or anything like that for Jakey. It might bother him too greatly. Not well, but I don't. I think the ball was in the vicinity, so you just get a head high and that's it. Gee, that was a courageous play. Yep, he knew it was coming too. And Zach Dawson accidentally gets a lot of blokes. <laughs> You'd know about you that, Jim. <laughs> Fancy to you talking. I thought I was talking about this game. Those are living glass houses. Well, Jake King really needs to just summons the effort here to make sure he can go back and drill the goal. Remembering that Bradley missed one not that long ago. Fremantle threatening to tear this game apart. They lead by 22. Jake King, you can see what's in front of him. 35 metres or so to negotiate. Looks good off the boot. Oh, is good through the middle. Well Tigers first of the quarter. A long time coming. Oh, it was 
20 minutes in the making, that one. Come off, Jakey, and get a nice pack on your head. <laughs> no, they're keeping him out. <laughs> Send him back out. I don't think they can afford to uh, rotate the interchange, Jacko, anymore. Uh, uh, they look like, well, they're the man down with Ben yeah. Griffiths being subbed out, which, and uh, get, they get their sub comes into play, but he's hardly a key position player, so they're going to be down rotations. Not so much the number of rotations, but the type of player who can be rotated mm. positionally. Uh, Hanlon comes in, Griffith has gone out for the Tigers, so it's a key position player there down. Well, a goal can make a difference in a game. We know that White to Nahas. Suddenly, Richmond have got a little bit more belief. Opportunities start to abound. Cochin deep. Revolt plants himself in the pocket. Drew some severe contact. King didn't try and have the shot. McGuan's become a goal kicker in recent week. Kick it, Leo. Oh, oh, no. On the line. Dire result for Richmond from where they were. Now, I, I know that old saying, I oh, kicked it like a backman, but that was a backman running into an opportunity in front of goals. Just couldn't seize the moment in the right millisecond to actually take the shot. Fresh from three last week. Well, that one hurts. Oh, it does hurt because you, you get to ten points down at that situation when you've been out of the game. Scoreboard-wise, you're back in it. Well, let's see if they can hem them in at all here. Monday, they're starting to run well, aren't they, in the link? Effectively. Crowley back to the wing again. Valentine made the most of slipping over and it actually worked to his advantage. Look, Crowley gets himself into trouble. The Lydia there to pounce. A little give from Nahas was a good give. Sometimes a little handball can create so much. The Lydia got it from O'Hanlon. He decided to go solo. He had other options and it's bounced in the most spectacular way for the Tigers and Brett De Lidio. He you was riding that home with a remote control, Dern. Absolutely. And you notice on the approach, when he was 55 out, McGuan sneaks forward on him. We'll get a look at it at this angle. He seizes McGuan. He says, nah, you've had a chance. Yep. Now watch this. McGuan comes back into the front of screen there, in Boy. the middle. <laughs> Handball on the top, over the top's on. Never but looked he like it. Preferred, oh. preferred the 55-metre <laughs> shot than give it into McGuan. Good strike. It's a team lifter, though, isn't it? And yep. from, it came oh. from one of their prime movers in Brett Delidio. The other thing that happened, too, they had the disappointment of McGuan missing the goal from the square to then rebound very quickly is a, a good sign. Marriage to Jackson. They slip out the side. Transformation in this game. But Duffield had other ideas. Kicks towards centre half forward. Richmond have the extra number, but Maine does not care. He waited till he got reinforcements, and it's Kepler Bradley who owes them one. And that's not going to make it up. So the margin back to 10. Richmond away quickly. White has to get on the bike here, and he decides to go with it. Took the mark. Kicks the centre half forward to McGuan. How will he use it? He didn't want to hang on for too long. Made it King's problem, and he finds a way out the back. Back to McGuan again. Trying to engineer something, but uh, found the odds too difficult. McPhee, very ambitious, and it proved to be successful. Since, since that Kepler-Bradley miss from in front, Richmond have uh, been operating at 85% efficiency. So they've, they've got their tails up just from that moment and been able to hit the target, and it's transpired two goals to none in that period. White eventually got the releasing handball. Now Newman has to wait till it bounced. That worked well because it meant his players got into dangerous position further ahead. Nahas caught. Should have probably been holding the ball. Maybe it just fell loose rather than was tackled. You know what I mean? Yep. 45 possessions to 21 also since the Kepler-Bradley set shot miss. Well done to the Tigers. Well done. They lifted their work rate. They, they have created that loose man in defence again, boys. It's now Tuck who they'll probably swap over and Newman will do that job again. Plenty of work being done on Sandy Lands. And while he's off, Richmond can perhaps make hay. Edwards kick comes back at him. Oh, they were all worried about the man in the footy, then the Tigers. And it fell for Mundy. Kicks to half forward. Pavlich has a crowd alongside him. Oh, Walters poked it to his own advantage. Here's trouble for Richmond. Walters with the long, flowing, oh. bouncing goal.
He's talented, Walters. He's been pushed off the ball a couple of times today, and I won't say ragdolled, but really pushed away from where the drop of the ball should be. But he's not a big kid. He's not a big man. Does this but well. he does have a touch of class by foot. Summed that up pretty well. If he doesn't get that right to the line, Richmond sees that and repel it going the other way. Clever kick. Pavlic drop again. Uh, Jack, oh, I don't know what's going on with this. And as you can see, Matthew Pavlic in that last contest went to the ground, limped all the way to the bench, so he's in the hands of the trainers here, guys. Well, I think this, this is the only issue for Fremantle is the health and welfare of Pavlic and Sandilands, Jacko. He's been off for a while, Sandilands. He's probably only resting, but uh, we know it's his first game back, so interesting oh. how much he can do in the ruck. They're off and running again. Fremantle here. Hairball from Pierce was creative. Barlow took his time before he released. Top of the square, and Pavlic takes... Uh, Valentine takes the mark. Well, that, that was a that, mongrel. That was a mongrel, but that rebound was just disastrous. It said half back. Well, it, it comes from Dustin Martin. Dustin Martin just got clear of that centre bounce scrimmage and just didn't put the ball to advantage. Kicks it straight to Johnston. The rebound goes over everyone's head into Clancy Pierce's arms, and he's he's downhill skiing from there. Well, Martin is going at only 20% kicking efficiency at the moment, just the five touches as we watch Ballantyne. He doesn't make the same mistake that Bradley did before. It's back to 22. For the amount of goals they put through that big fella there on screen, and they're, they're a wonderful negating team. It's stopping and choking opposition sides. But it requires Matty Pavlich to kick goals if they are to be a serious threat as we reach the pointy end of the season. Valentine comes off now after kicking one through and letting his opponents know about it and niggle. So Matty Pavlich, his fitness is paramount. So this was Pavlich a couple of minutes ago, as Glenn Jakovic described. He had a three-on-one when he went for that ball out on the wing, and they, they just got a few bodies onto him as he went to the contest and fell into it. Looks like he's nearly ready to come back now. Conchin saw a little tunnel to try and get through. Couldn't quite. Tuck was there to back him up, and Revo will mark this. And Richmond has Nahas bolts to the square. Jack uh, decides back. to go back. Yeah, I, I like that. A, a key forward gets the opportunity. All you do with Nahas is you, you kick it over the top and keep it in the air so it can be intercepted. Your key forward has to take the responsibility. Well, then they go to Pavlich 34% of the time doing so. You well, need him up and three. going, that's yeah. right. So Jack Revolt already with one goal to his name. Average two goals a game against Freo in his career. It's that a big one's kick. tight, but it's there. It's a goal. And they still live, the Tigers. Let's have a look at Jack, how he's got to this current place in time with his goal kicking this season. As we look into the forward line then. Once again, no big surprise. The corridor has been massive for him, but he has had... Well, that one then, he actually... His kicking foot was from outside 50 then, but... 39... How are we going there? How's my maths? Sure, 26, 39 from the corridor. That left-hand area of the 21 segment, major scoring zone. Coleman is up for grabs well and truly, particularly if Matthew Pavlich has sustained any sort of injury that's going to affect him from here until the end of the season. Marich got his hands on that one. Needs to have an effect in the middle to stop the dominance of the big fella Sandilands. Clearances for the quarter are 8-7 to seven in favour of Frio. We have a look at the two teams. There are big numbers around the ball now. Richmond are basically playing a four-man forward line. And the Tigers and the uh, Dockers are playing a three-man forward line. Everybody else up and congest the area around the footy. Ball was touched, so it was up for grabs. And in the end, Fremantle, just a little bit of extra class with Ibbotson and Pierce And McPhee now, oh, he needed bounce. this to go his way. And it did in the end with Zungu. Oh, they're out here, though, on the wing. Duffield for Spur. No runs, real... runs hard. Runs hard, hardly spill. He does. No real next immediate option for him. So it's long to a one-on-one. -on -one. Morris much better in that situation against Walters. Both have their strengths. Morris able to measure the kickoff successfully to Nahas. Tigers just looking a little better. 
Martin, as we said, hasn't had a great game so far. Beckman and his teammates That's to give him better. something. Gets it deep. It's two on one in the air, but on the ground. Numbers are better for Richmond. Edwards, be happy with a bounce here, I reckon. He'll get it. Very unsure hands below his knees there, Johnson. Michael Johnson. Just... Pavlich came up lame. That was the last time before Pavlich went off. Now, it's back to Sandlin. It's back on his terms. What the old kick? There we go. There's a race on here. And the, in the end, the kick was designed to get over the boundary line, and that's exactly where it goes. See, so Crowley, just as he trails in to Lidio there, just touches him in the middle of the back to let him know, hey, even if he had got there first, you'd have, you'd have had to earn it. Just arm across the chest there already. Two minutes, 16 remaining. Tigers boxing on late in this quarter. They absolutely needed to. Jackson with an appetite for the ball. Has had a bit of work done, Matthew Pavlich. A couple of run-throughs, he's good to go. <laughs> Toledo, he's got the hands on the knees, trying to suck in a bit of air. Crowley pushes him sideways, <laughs> makes him stumble. Yeah, just annoying. He's a fantastic player. He actually does everything within the rules, Ryan Crowley. Well done, Marich. Down to Martin. It's into the danger area again. Duffield and McPhee are going to conspire to get it out of there quickly. Ibbotson used the time that was allocated. Beautifully placed kick for Ballantyne. Causing some problems, some head axe for the Tigers. Kicks to half forward. That's a oh, good, strong oh, mark taken by Tuck. He's been sitting there for about seven minutes now. He wouldn't be used to that uh, kick behind play roll because he's normally in an underplay. Shane Tuck. Post. Has the ball just behind the wing. King had to wait an inordinate amount of time and drew some contact. Oh, he's too good. Right, oh. right in that certain spot. He's caught oh, one oh, in the oh, face oh, and oh. now he's copped one. You know, more than the face. There'd be no trying to rub them better. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> he wants to come off. Oh, we've all been there. Someone run to him to get the handball. Why <laughs> oh, is it funny for everyone else? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he crabs off the ground afterwards. Oh, here's, well done, Jakey. Here's yeah. Crowley. Now, Hooli has to go in an uncomfortable position. Did well. But Maine could have been a destructive oh. handball. And that's against Hill. And they are going down everywhere at the moment, particularly the Tiger players in the last few minutes. But, of course, Fremantle have had their own casualties with Matthew Pavlich. Hey, Jacko, just watching Jack King down there, he's in a real bad way, isn't he? He is a little bit tight, <laughs> A few fans here are uh, finding it quite humorous as well. So. Oh, there they would. Yeah. Jackson into Cochin. If anyone can get out of there, it's Cochin. How good was the hand strength of Clancy Pierce just to hang on to the back of that jumper while he was twisting and turning away from him? Rapid fire hands in tight from the Tigers and Dockers. A lot at stake here at Patterson Stadium late in the second quarter. Margin is 16. Delicate balance. Nahas whips it back to the top. It could be a Tiger mark. It's not, at least not yet, a Richmond ball. It still comes, goes pinging around. Good tackle this from Dustin Martin. They try and lock it in. And the umpire deems that he can't get a real read on that, Shane McInerney. It's another ball up. 12 seconds on the clock. Only his sixth game, O'Hanlon. At game number 26, he'll take a shot from that gather. Jackson just can't get out of there. They need it, and they need it now, Richmond. Oh, Spur, how did he dispose of the footy? They've counted it down, and they've dodged one there, Fremantle. Right under the Tigers, I don't. Yeah, they did look as if an avalanche was coming, didn't it? Midway through that quarter. Just off the ball too, Nathan Fife. He pushed Daniel Jackson over. The umpire ran in to say cut that out. But he denied Jackson a chance to run to that. It wasn't anything to do, but gee, further upfield I've seen those types of free kicks paid. All right, this game far from over. Fremantle lead by 16 at Patterson Stadium. They could be in the eight tonight.